Hello. Let's do a quick review of the structure and operation of the bipolar junction transistor. Uh, we typically refer to it as the BJT transistor. And again, that stands for bipolar junction transistor. And the name bipolar stems from the fact that in a BJT transistor, current is due to flow of um, charge carriers of both polarities, electrons and holes. So current to both electrons and holes. Uh, there are two um, types of BJT transistors, MPN or PMP. And so let's review, uh, for the sake of example, the operation of the MPN first. And as the name suggests, uh, the structure of it consists of um, two back-to-back PN junctions. So an N region, a P region, and another N region, N, P, N. Um, it is a three-terminal device, and so one of the terminals we will refer to as the collector. Another one will be the emitter, and the third terminal will be the base. And if you recall, uh, even though this resembles two PMP uh, or two uh, PN junctions that are back to back, in all reality, they're, they're more like two interacting uh, PN junctions. And so the operation of the whole thing is not going to be exactly like uh, the two PN junctions separately. For proper operation of transistor, if you recall, uh, this was not a symmetrical device as it appears right now, but rather the emitter needed to be highly doped um, and the base needs to be narrow and lightly doped to represent that um, higher concentration of doping or lower concentration of doping with those plus and minus superscripts. Um, and we're going to review its operation in the linear or active region. Now, to place the transistor in the linear active region, uh, there are two things that we need to do. The first thing is forward bias the base emitter junction, and so connect, I'm going to connect here a voltage source, VBE. And in order to forward bias that emitter junction, or the base emitter junction, uh, that voltage VBE needs to be approximately 0.7 volts. And then, I'm going to also set a voltage across the collector and emitter, which I will label as VCE. And again, in order for the transistor to be in the linear region, um, that VCE needs to be at least uh, the saturation voltage, which is around 0.3 volts. So I'm going to say VCE is greater than or equal to that saturation voltage 0.3. Um, if these two conditions are met, then this transistor is biased in the linear active region. And the way it operates is, uh, since the base emitter junction is forward biased, um, current will flow through a forward bias PN junction. And so we have a heavily, let's represent that with red for the electrons. We have a heavily doped emitter, uh, which means there is a high concentration of free electrons in the emitter. And now you have a forward bias P injunction, so those electrons are going to want to move into the base through the forward bias P injunction. So I'll represent that with red. Now, we just mentioned that the base is narrow and is lightly doped, which means there are very few holes for those electrons that are injected from the emitter into the base to recombine. Um, and so most of the electrons will have a long lifetime in the base, which means they will not recombine with available holes. Because we have also an electric field uh, between collector and emitter, that electric field is attracting those electrons uh, that have not recombined and that are in the base, it's attracting them towards the collector. Now you may think, well, it is a reverse bias P injunction, so current normally shouldn't flow through a reverse bias P injunction, and I'm referring to the base collector junction, and that is true, um, except if you remember, there is a small reverse bias current in a reverse bias P injunction, which is due to the minority carriers. So there will be naturally occurring a small reverse bias current, a small flow of electrons, which are minority carriers in the base, towards the collector. But because we're constantly injecting electrons from the emitter into the base, 
um, there's a lot of emitters in the base, which will normally not be the case in a lightly doped p-type region, as is the base. But because we now have a lot of electrons, that reverse bias current or that reverse junction current becomes very large. And in fact, most of those electrons will continue um, to flow into the collector. A few of them, as we, will men as we mentioned, will recombine with available holes at the base. So there will be a small um, current there due to the recombination. Uh, and let's represent the holes in orange. And so there will be some holes recombining with those electrons and then some reverse um, leakage current from the base into the, um, into the emitter. Let's represent these were holes. The red ones were electrons. And so this is more or less what's going on um, in that MPN transistor, in summary. Again, um, electrons get elect um, emitted from the emitter, if you will, into the base. No, uh, nothing interesting there. It's just a forward bias P injunction, so the electrons flow. Once in the base, a few of them recombine. Most of them get collected by the collector because there is a strong, a strong enough, if the voltage is greater than 0.3 volts, electric field uh, to bring them into the collector. So we say they get collected by the collector. Um, and so we have movement of charge through the MPN transistor, which means we have current flow. Um, by convention, the direction of current flow is the direction of flow of positive charge. And so in this case, it will be the direction of flow opposite to the direction of flow of the electrons. So if I am to represent the MPN transistor by its circuit symbol. I will have here my collector, my emitter, my base. And I will see that there is um, some current flowing into the collector terminal. Again, it's the opposite direction of the flow of electrons. Some current flowing out of the emitter terminal and some current flowing into the base. From Kirchhoff's current law, we know that the sum of currents entering the device must equal the sum of currents leaving the device. And so we can write the equation that the emitter current is equal to the sum of the collector current plus the base current. Now, normally we will have that, um, as we have seen, um, the base current is very small compared to the collector or emitter currents. There are very few, uh, very few recombination at the base. And so we will have that um, IC is much greater than IB. And because of that, we can actually make the approximation and we will typically make the approximation of the collector current is approximately equal to the emitter current. Uh, they're not exactly equal. And in fact, the ratio of collector current to base current receives um, a name, is the name of beta, um, which is termed the current gain. We'll see why in a second. And uh, for a typical small signal transistor, it's in the range of um, 100 to 300, normally. And then the ratio of the collector to the emitter current also receives um, a special name, and that's alpha. And it's typically approximately equal to one, again, because uh, the emitter and collector current are approximately equal to each other. Um, so we normally, like I said, we are normally going to be making the approximation that the collector and emitter, and emitter currents are equal to each other. That's an important relationship. Again, I'm talking about the, the linear or active region. Um, what else? Let's go ahead and highlight this just to make sure that we are talking about that region. Okay, another important parameter perhaps is the power dissipated in the transistor. Um, we'll call it PT. And power um, is going to be the product of uh, voltage times current for any device, for any electrical device. In this case, a little bit more complex because we have uh, several currents and several voltages. Uh, for one thing, we have the base emitter voltage that we set to 0.7 volts, and there is a small current we saw. 
And so that will be the first component of our power dissipation will be um, IB times VBE. But there is also the collector current and the collector to emitter voltage. And so we also have to keep into consideration IC and VCE. And so, and rather than writing them like that, I'm going to use the standard notation I used above with uh, lowercase letters and capital subscripts. So IB times VBE plus IC times VCE. That's the general equation for power. Now again, in the linear region, uh, VBE is going to be um, small, around 0.7 volts, and IB is going to be really small, around 100 times smaller than IC. Um, and so that means that the, the first term, IB times VBE, is going to be very small compared to the second term. So we're going to be able to approximate the power dissipated by the transistor as IC VCE. Again, when we're talking about the linear region. Okay, um, we did talk about alpha and beta. Uh, there is a relationship between the two, and so when you look at the transistor data sheet, you will notice that uh, the parameter beta typically comes to specify, that's the, uh, the forward current gain. Um, alpha typically will not come specified. Um, the reason for that is because, again, they are related, so you can derive one from the other. In fact, um, I can write my KCL. Again, which I had written up here as IE equals IC plus IB. And we know that IC is equal to beta times IB because of that ratio that we established before. So I can rewrite my first equation as IE being equal to um, IC, which is beta times IB plus IB, or beta plus 1 times IB. And so I can... Solve for IB as it being equal to IE divided by beta plus 1. And again, solving um, back from my IC equation, if I rewrite down here, I will have IC equals beta times IB, and I'm substituting IB with that expression that I just got. I will have uh, beta divided by beta plus 1 times IE. And since alpha is uh, the ratio between IC and IE, it follows that this expression here is actually alpha. Okay. Um, and this is the structure and basic operation in the linear region for the uh, MPN transistor. In the next video, we're going to talk about the PMP transistor and we'll see it's actually very similar. All right, so we just saw the structure of operation of the uh, MPN transistor in the active or linear region. And I'm going to go ahead and erase this part. So we can see the similar structure and operation for the um, PMP transistor.